The 1979 World Series was the 76th edition of Major League Baseball's Championship Series and the conclusion of the 1979 Major League Baseball season. A best-of-seven playoff, it was played between the National League champion Pittsburgh Pirates and the American League champion Baltimore Orioles with the Pirates becoming the fourth team in World Series history to come back from a three games to one deficit to win the series in seven games. This marked the second time in the 1970s the Pirates won a World Series Game 7 on the road against Baltimore Orioles, the previous time being in the 1971 World Series. The Pirates were famous for adopting Sister Sledge's hit anthem, We Are Family, as their theme song. Willie Stargell, pitcher Bruce Kisson, and catcher Manny Sanguillan were the only players left over from the Pirates team that defeated the Orioles in the 1971 World Series, and Orioles pitcher Jim Palmer, shortstop Mark Bellinger, and manager Earl Weaver were the only remaining Orioles from the 1971 team. Grant Jackson pitched for the Orioles in the 1971 series and for the Pirates in the 1979 series. In this series, it was the American League team's turn to play by National League rules, meaning no designated hitter and the Orioles pitchers would have to bat. While this resulted in Tim Stoddard getting his first major league hit and RBI in Game 4, overall, it hurt the Orioles because Lee May, their designated hitter for much of the season and a key part of their offense, was only able to bat three times in the whole series. Willie Stargell, the series MVP, hit .400 with a record seven extra base hits and matched Reggie Jackson's record of 25 total bases, set in 1977. The 1979 Pirates were the last team to win Game 7 of a World Series on the road until the San Francisco Giants defeated the Royals in Kansas City to win Game 7 of the 2014 series. They were also the last road team to win Game 7 of a championship round, in any major league sport, until the Pittsburgh Penguins defeated the Detroit Red Wings 2–1 at Joe Louis Arena to win the 2009 Stanley Cup Finals. With the Steelers having already won Super Bowl XIII, Pittsburgh also became the second city to win both the Super Bowl and the World Series in the same year, with the New York Jets and the New York Mets winning titles in 1969. New York repeated the feat in 1986 New York Mets and New York Giants, as did the New England area in the 2004 season Boston Red Sox and New England Patriots and the 2018 season Red Sox and Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> Background Topic: Baltimore Orioles. These same two teams met in 1971. Earl Weaver's Orioles had won the first two games of that series, only to lose to Danny Murtaugh's Pirates in seven. This time, Pittsburgh manager Chuck Tanner was looking to win a series of his own. Gone were the likes of slugger Boog Powell and defensive wizard Brooks Robinson. Shortstop Mark Bellinger and pitcher Jim Palmer were the only two remaining players from the 1971 roster. A young 23-year-old, Steady Eddie, Murray was a staple at first base and an emerging superstar. The only other real, star, hitter on the team was right fielder Ken Singleton who set career highs in home runs. 35, and runs batted in, 111, in the regular season. Center fielder Al Bambri provided the speed, 37 swipes, and outfielder Gary Rainick and third baseman Doug DeSinces provided some additional power. 
The talented pitching staff was captained by veteran catcher Rick Dempsey. The starters were led by 1979 Cy Young Award winner Mike Flanagan, 23 to 9, 3.08; Scott McGregor, 13 to 6, 3.35; Steve Stone, 11 to 7, 3.77; and Jim Palmer, 10 to 6, 3.30. The bullpen helped with 30 wins against only 13 losses led by Don Stanhouse 7 to 3, 21 saves and Tippy Martinez 10 to 3, 2.88. The Orioles won the American League East rather easily, finishing 8 games ahead of the second place Milwaukee Brewers. Topic: <laughs> Pittsburgh Pirates. On the other hand, these Pittsburgh Pirates struggled early in the season, eventually winning the National League East by just two games over the Montreal Expos. Only after getting infielders, Tim Foley from the New York Mets and Bill Madlock from the San Francisco Giants, did the Pirates start winning consistently. The great Roberto Clemente had inspired the 1971 team toward the title and the key ingredient to this team was his successor and spiritual leader, 38-year-old Willie Pops Stargell. His clubhouse demeanor, a simple good-heartedness and friendly manner, helped keep the Pirates loose during a tight divisional race with a surprise sweep of the always powerful Cincinnati Reds in the league championship series. The book's lineup featured the National League leader in stolen bases, Omar Marino with 77, team runs batted in leader, Dave Parker with 98, and two-time batting champion, Bill Madlock 1975, Madlock would add two more batting titles in 1981 and 1983. The pitching staff was a ragtag bunch led by the Candy Man, John Candelaria's 14 wins, nine losses, with five other pitchers winning 10 or more games. The tall and lean Kent Tekulf had 31 saves, good for second in the league, while winning 10 games. Pops Stargell would hit three home runs in this series, becoming the oldest player to win both the regular season MVP and the World Series MVP. His family would persevere after losing three out of the first four games, giving Earl Weaver and his Orioles a deja vu nightmare when the books came back to win in seven games. Topic <laughs> summary: NI Pittsburgh Pirates four vs Al Baltimore Orioles three. Topic Matchups Topic Game One Game One was originally scheduled for Tuesday, October ninth, but was postponed due to a wintry mix of rain and snow. When it was played the following night, the first pitch temperature of 41 degrees Fahrenheit 5 degrees Celsius was the coldest in the history of the Fall Classic until it was eclipsed 18 years later in Game 4 of the 1997 World Series. A steady rain that fell throughout the contest also factored into the six total errors, three committed by each team. All five Orioles' runs were scored in the first inning, two on a throwing error by second baseman Phil Garner, followed by one on a wild pitch by starter Bruce Kisson and the final two on a Doug DeSince's home run. A pair of RBIs each for Garner two out single in the sixth and Willie Stargell ground out in the fourth, led off homer in the eighth sparked a Pirates comeback that fell a run short. Game 2 
This time, the Pirates struck first with two in the second on an RBI single by Bill Madlock and a sacrifice fly by catcher Ed Ott. The Orioles counted in the bottom half of the inning with an Eddie Murray homer. Murray would also tie the game in the sixth by doubling in Ken Singleton. Murray tried to put the Orioles ahead in the same inning by tagging and attempting to score on a line out to right by John Lowenstein, but Dave Parker threw him out easily. Making the decision to send Murray was made that much more odd by the fact that Parker's throw to the plate arrived well ahead of him. Murray tried to bowl Ott over at the plate, but the stocky Ott held fast, staying on his feet. Murray also made a questionable base running decision in the eighth. With Murray on second and Doug DeSinces on first with no outs, Lowenstein grounded to shortstop Tim Foley. Murray strangely stopped instead of running out the force play. Foley attempted a tag which Murray eluded, and then threw to Phil Garner at second to force DeSinces. Murray's hesitation allowed Garner to throw to third and catch him in a rundown. Murray slowed up returning to second when he should have sped back since he was entitled to the base with DeSinces being forced out. Murray would not collect another hit or RBI for the rest of the series. In the ninth, after a two-out single by Ott and a walk to Garner, Manny Sanguilan pinch hit for Don Robinson and hacked a high and outside fastball from Don Stanhouse into right for a single. Ott barely slid past the outstretched arms of catcher Rick Dempsey to score the winning run, after Murray had questionably cut off a strong throw from RF Ken Singleton. Kent Tekelv retired the side in the ninth for the save. Game 3 The Pirates jumped out to an early 3–0 lead on a Dave Parker sacrifice fly in the first and a one-out, two-run double by Garner in the second. A Benny Ayala one-out, two-run homer cut the Orioles' deficit to one just before a 67-minute rain delay in the middle of the third inning. The Orioles seized the momentum after play resumed by scoring five runs in the fourth, highlighted by a Kiko Garcia bases loaded triple that chased Pirates starter John Candelaria from the game along with an RBI single by Ken Singleton and ground out by Doug DeSinces off of Enrique Romo. Garcia added a two-out RBI single in the seventh, finishing the evening going four for four with four RBI. Scott McGregor allowed only run other run after the second on Bill Madlock's RBI single in the sixth after a Willie Stargell double and pitched a complete game to give the Orioles a two-to-one series lead. Topic <laughs> Game Four. The Pirates seized an early 4–0 lead in the second on a lead-off homer by Stargell, a two-run double by Ott and an Omar Marino two-out RBI single. The first two were among five straight hits that effectively ended starter Dennis Martinez's afternoon. The Orioles counted with three runs in the third off Jim Bibby on consecutive one-out doubles by Garcia two RBI and Ken Singleton. The Pirates stretched their lead to 6–3 on RBI doubles by John Milner and Parker in the fifth and sixth innings respectively. In the eighth, Earl Weaver once again showed some strategic genius. With one out and the bases loaded, Pirates manager Chuck Tanner sent in submarining relief ace Kent Tekelv to face right-handed hitting Gary Rainick. Weaver countered by pinch-hitting lefty John Lowenstein, figuring the lefty would be better able to hit Tekel's sidewhip pitches. Lowenstein made the move pay off by slamming a two-run double. After a walk loaded the bases again, Weaver sent another lefty hitter, Terry Crowley, to bat for Dave Skaggs. Crowley smashed another two-run double off Tekel to give the Orioles the lead. 
To add insult to injury, pitcher Tim Stoddard, batting because Weaver was out of pinch hitters at that point, followed with an RBI single. An RBI force out by Bambri ended the scoring. <laughs> Game 5 With a world championship on the line and Game 1 starter Bruce Kisson injured, Chuck Tanner decided to go with little-used veteran left-hander Jim Rooker as his starter. He would let Rooker go as long as possible, then bring in Burt Blylevin to finish, saving his two best pitchers, sore-shouldered John Candelaria and Jim Bibby for Games 6 and 7, if played. The risky move more than paid off as Rooker gave Tanner five good innings, holding the Orioles to one run in the fifth when Gary Rainick scored on a double play grounder. The Pirate Bats finally came alive against Mike Flanagan in the sixth on a sacrifice fly by Willie Stargell and an RBI single by Bill Madlock. The Pirates added two more in the seventh on a RBI triple by Tim Foley and a RBI double by Dave Parker, and then three more in the eighth on a RBI single by Phil Garner and a two-run single by Foley. Thanks to the unexpected performance from Rooker, a four-for-four four day from Madlock, and Foley's three RBIs, the Pirates had staved off defeat. Chuck Tanner's mother died the morning of Game 5 this was mentioned during the telecast by announcer Howard Kozel. 1960 World Series hero Bill Mazeroski threw out the first ball in Game 5, which would be Three Rivers Stadium's final World Series game and, to date, the last World Series game played in Pittsburgh. Game 6 Back home at Memorial Stadium, local baseball coach Mary Dobkin threw out the ceremonial first pitch. The Oriole Bats continued to be unexpectedly cold as John Candelaria and Jim Palmer locked into a scoreless duel through six innings. Dave Parker broke the ice with a RBI single in the seventh, followed by a Stargell sacrifice fly. The Pirates added two more runs in the eighth on a Bill Robinson sack fly and a RBI single by Omar Marino. After the game Howard Kozel in his limo was surrounded and attacked by angry Oriole fans with shaving cream, which prompted Baltimore police to compliment his private security for Game 7. Game 7 The Pirates capped an amazing comeback on the strength of Willie Stargell, who went 4 for 5 with a single, two doubles, and a towering two-run homer in the sixth off Scott McGregor. McGregor pitched eight solid innings in a losing cause. For insurance in the ninth, Omar Marino collected an RBI single, while another run scored when Dave Parker and Bill Robinson were hit by pitchers back-to-back, -back, scoring Marino. Orioles manager Earl Weaver made five pitching changes in the ninth inning in an attempt to keep the game within reach. The O's only run came on a Rich Dyer homer in the third, the team's second RBI in the last three games. Significantly, Eddie Murray, the Orioles' main offensive threat, was 0 for 21 in the final five games of the series, including a fly out to Parker to end the eighth with the bases loaded following an intentional walk to Ken Singleton. Following their six run outburst in the eighth inning of Game 4, the Birds scored only two runs on 17 hits over the series' final 28 innings. Pirates reliever Grant Jackson got the win after two and two-thirds innings after relieving Don Robinson, who had relieved Jim Bibby who lasted four innings and allowed the lone Oriole run. U.S. President Jimmy Carter made an appearance in Game 7—he threw out the first pitch—and after the game made a visit to the victorious Pittsburgh clubhouse. 
Prior to the ceremonial first pitch, the United States Army Field Band played the national anthem, as they had in the finales of the Orioles' two previous World Series appearances. Pirates closer Kent Tekelv earned a save. With the exception of winning the 2013 National League Wild Card game this is the last postseason series the Pirates have won. Topic. Composite box 1979 World Series 4 Pittsburgh Pirates NL over Baltimore Orioles AL. Topic. Records Five Pirates had ten or more hits in this series, a World Series record. Willie Stargell and Phil Garner had 12 hits each, Omar Marino 11, and Tim Foley and Dave Parker 10 each. Bill Madlock came close to a sixth with nine hits. The Baltimore Orioles set a record by manager Earl Weaver for most pitchers used in a single inning five. Topic uniforms The Pirates wore four different uniform combinations during the series, gold cap, black jersey and gold pants for games 1 and 5 black cap, gold jersey and black pants for games 2, 6 and 7 black cap and solid white pinstriped uniform for game 3 black cap and solid gold uniform for game 4. The Orioles wore three different uniform combinations of their own, white cap, orange jersey and white pants for games 1 and 7 white cap, white jersey and white pants for games 2 and 6 white cap, gray jersey and gray pants for games 3, 4 and 5. Topic broadcasting This was the first World Series in which the participating team's announcers were not involved in the play calling on national radio. Network television had done the same in 1977. For the 79 Classic, Vin Scully and Sparky Anderson handled the play by play work for the CBS radio network. The series was televised by ABC Sports, with play by play announcers Keith Jackson in Baltimore and Al Michaels in Pittsburgh, and color commentators Howard Kozel and Don Drysdale. ABC's broadcast was also simulcast over the Orioles and Pirates' respective local television outlets, CBS affiliates WMAR-TV in Baltimore and KDKA-TV in Pittsburgh. In 2006 a collector's edition DVD box set, featuring the complete ABC telecasts of all seven games, was issued by Major League Baseball and A&E Home Video. Topic Notes Topic See also nineteen seventy nine Japan series